Good evening. Well, morning, probably, by the time you listen to this. And welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. So, we're going to go back to the old way of doing it for this episode, and possibly other episodes in the future, because I have time. So we can do that. Um, because my movie's not till 7. It is 6.11. And, uh, we have time. I've eaten. I had a nice burrito. Um, and I am ready to sit through this, uh, this new... Well, sit through sounds mean. So what we got today is we're going to talk about Creed 3. Now, um, the way this works, for those of you who are not familiar with this format, is uh, talk about the movie a little bit beforehand, before I see it, what we know going in, what our expectations are, all that kind of stuff. Then we see the movie, then we talk about it. Now, considering this is an early screening on Wednesday, we're going to break that part up into two parts. One's a spoiler-free part, one is a spoiler-filled part. Um, and maybe we get more into the details and all that kind of stuff. Um, so... And, and then the spoiler-free and spoiler-filled parts will be denoted by a uh, a noise. I will say it. There's also going to be the the the, uh, the what's it called the um, the spoiler warning noise that we have. Um, I think if not, I gotta look at my files see if I have it on hand. If not, we'll just say spoiler-filled part starts now. Um, what we're going to talk about for a little bit before we see the movie is where we are with Creed and Creed Two. Um, I went into Creed with very little expectations. I think that, like, the expectations were so low on this that Peter and I didn't even... We, we went to see this movie in a theater um, way back in, when the movie came out. And the expectations were so low that we were like, eh, let's not do an episode about it. We didn't even do an episode of Beware of Spoilers about Creed. And, and Beware of Spoilers was fairly new at that point. We had done, like, Black Mass and a few other movies that had just come out in theaters. Um, but this would have been toward the beginning, and we were like, eh, it's not really worth the effort uh, to do that. And then we saw the movie, and it was way better than not only a Rocky movie had any right to be, but any movie that we had seen recently had any right to be. And everything about it kind of clicked, and it's like, you know, the, like we, we saw it in a theater, it was reasonably crowded, and there were a lot of people there, and people were, like, amped up to see it, and it was it was a, a, one of the few times I was in a crowded theater, and I was like, all right, this theater's rowdy, but I'm okay with it. Um, and that was kind of where we were with, with Creed, and it's like, the movie's great all around. Then Creed 2, I don't think I saw Creed 2 in a theater. I don't know what made me skip Creed 2, um, in 2017, 2018, whenever it came, 2018 is when it came out, I don't know what made me skip it. Um, maybe it was, I think it was, at the time, AMC A-List hadn't come out yet, so I was still kind of trying to find my bearings about what to and not to cover for this. No, AMC A-List had to come out at that point, because I, I, no, did I see La La Land with A-List? No, I think I paid for La La Land. I don't remember when A-List came out, but I feel like this might have been pre-A-List, so it was like, maybe the content wouldn't have been good, so it wasn't worth seeing in a theater. Um, there were some reasons I didn't see Creed 2 in a theater. Uh, and then I took it home and watched it, and I've said it before, watching a movie at home is not the same as watching it in a theater. In a theater, you get a distraction-free environment to an extent. At home, you don't get that. At home, you get anything going on. You can sit there and look at your phone. You can sit there and play a video game. You can do anything else, which is kind of how I consume a lot of things that I watch at home. Because, um, like, you know, I, I'm, now I'm watching a movie or watching a show. Like, tonight I'm going to be watching The Mandalorian and The Bad Batch. And I'm watching these things, and I'm... Um, Looking at, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm guaranteed I'm be playing Kingdom Hearts 2 tonight. That's I've been, I've been falling back into is playing Kingdom Hearts 2 um, on PC. And it's, you know, it's it, I know I'm going to fall back into that. I'm like two hours in and I've already cleared the first world. I've already cleared all the way through Mulan's world. Anyway, we're not here to talk about my progress in Kingdom Hearts 2. Uncritical again. Um, but the thing is, when we look at this, you know, the... That movie, I wasn't quite as impressed by it. But when I watched it again recently, I was a little bit more into it. I think part of it is, and I've said this before, and people have given me shit for it, and I get shit for this fairly regularly um, at work. I'm not the biggest Rocky IV fan. Keeping in mind I was born in a post-Cold War era, because I'm, I'm only 28. Um, like, I, I've, like, I didn't have the, you know, the, the nationalism that went into, you know, the, the U.S. versus Russia and, and all of that. So that didn't really grab me. It's the kind of thing where it's like you watch the movie and you're like, okay, I know what's going to happen from here on out. Like, it's a, it's the most predictable of the Rocky movies, I think. I mean, say what you will about five, but at least five goes in fucking directions you wouldn't expect it to. Um, 
And it's like with this, I was kind of like, um, I'm not the big, I'm not the biggest thing. So it had to clear that hurdle for me. And then when I watched it recently, I didn't have that same baggage for lack of a better word. So it didn't quite, um, impact me as negatively, um, when I watched it again. Um, and I think that they, it did a lot of things that were really interesting and it, it really allowed for a lot of character moments that maybe to the point where it's like, I was like, did I fully watch this movie or did I watch like half of it? Because a lot of it I didn't remember at all. Maybe I just tuned it out completely. But like the whole thing with, you know, him, the, the daughter being tested for hearing loss and all of that, it's such a, a great moment with Rocky talking to him about like, are you going to love her any less? Like that whole thing is so, so well done in the, in this, um, Nothing about that movie, you know, I, I um, failed for me. Um, I still think Creed is the better of the two between Creed and Creed Two. I think Creed is still the better movie because um, for me, nothing will beat that. You know, the at the end of the movie when he gets knocked down, he hears everyone calling out, you know, get up, get up, Donnie, get up, Donnie, and everyone's yelling, and it's like Rocky's yelling, and and um, and, and uh, Tessa Thompson's yelling, and um, and Felicia Rashad's yelling at home. And then you get that quick flash of just, uh, what's it called? Of just um, Apollo in the ring. And he gets back up. And he goes over to the to the side. And Rocky's like, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get out there and knock that son of a bitch down. And that's when the Rocky theme plays. And that forever will give me chills. And that, that moment is not replicated in Rocky II. Um, so it's definitely the stronger of the two. Uh, in terms of what I'm expecting out of Creed three, I'm expecting... A very strong movie with a strong performance out of Jonathan Majors. I've yet to be let down by Jonathan Majors uh, in a movie. He's great in The Last Black Man in San Francisco. He's great in in Loki and Quantum Mania. He's great in Lovecraft Country. I mean, the the man can't miss um, Jonathan Majors, and and he is doing such a fantastic job everywhere he goes that I'm like, this is going to be. Great. I have a feeling that I'm going to leave this movie and I'm going to think this is better than Creed. Um, but we'll see um, how that shapes out. Um, so we'll pause it here um, and we will uh, we will record the next part when I get out of the movie. Um, so from here, um, let's call let's uh, have this pause be to go see the movie. OK, so we're back from seeing Creed three. Uh, like I said before, we're going to do. Spoiler free and then spoiler filled after, so that way, because I'm because it is Wednesday night and the movie opens formally tomorrow. They did some advanced screenings at AMC, so I saw it a day early. Um, before we get into that, if you were going to a movie, um, if you are someone who is who is going to pay money to go to a movie theater and and see a movie, shut the fuck up while you're in the movie and act somewhat like a functioning adult. I don't know what it is um, about this that I'm like, why the fuck are people acting like such children in a movie? Like, just... You're paying money to watch the movie. Like, don't sit back there and play with the recliner. Don't sit back there and, and make noises or, or bring in a noise machine to make fucking dumbass noises the entire time. Just sit down and, and shut up. It's like, we're, we're here to watch the movie... Not the fucko variety hour that's happening in the back. This isn't riff tracks. This isn't you know you're not like fucking Waldorf and Statler from the fucking Muppets. You're you're not as funny as you think you are. You're just annoying to everyone around you, and, and it's like you're in a crowded screening, and it is the epitome of of self absorption and selfishness um, or narcissism really. To think that the world revolves around you. I say on a podcast where I spout my nonsense as if there's people who give a shit. Um, but look, if you're going to go to a movie, just act like an adult. Shut the fuck up and watch the movie. If you want to fuck around with your friends and watch the movie, that's fine. If you're in an empty theater where there's like no one else there. Or if you do it in your living room. where you, where you you Or your dorm in this case. These fuckers were from Stony Brook. Like, uh, there, there is nothing that I... That annoys me more than 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 that because it's the kind of thing where I sit there and I'm like, why the fuck did you pay all this money to go and see this movie or use your A-list thing to see this movie? And I just don't understand it. Now, as for the plot at hand um, for the movie, um, I think that there's a strong case to be made that this is the strongest of the three Creed movies. Um, Michael B. Jordan directed the fuck out of this movie. He's great. Um, the, the whole relationship and the way that the relationship is portrayed between, um, Donnie and, and Damien is just 
so well executed and so interesting that it can drive the narrative forward to the point where you're like, oh, we haven't seen a fight in a while, and that that is totally fine with what they're doing in the movie. Um, the fight sequences are great. The the every fighter feels unique and feels like they have their own fighting style, which is you know great. Like there's a brutality to the fights that we didn't have in previous movies, like where it's like the there's a midway fight in the movie. I'm not going to talk about that until we get to the spoiler portion, but there's a midway fight in the movie. Um, and it's just, someone gets fucked up, um, and it's just like, oh shit, like, you know, you feel it, like, to the point where I'm like, I don't know, like, I know where they're going with, I, I feel like I know where I'm going with this, and they didn't, thankfully, but, like, I don't know if I can watch this, um, like, and the thing is, too, with Damien, it's that you completely can empathize with Damien, and what Damien went through, and why Damien is doing what he's doing, which is fantastic, um, and I think that's something that is, you know, totally, totally on board. Now, granted, he crosses a line several times, and that is explicitly kind of laid bare in the movie. But you, you, you understand why he's doing what he's doing. Everything about his motivations and his actions makes sense, and and they feel human. Um, the I love the inclusion of past characters. It, it, like the lack of Rocky is not really addressed, which is a little weird. I'm assuming he died between movies. It's been like five years. Um, and, and the position that they put Adonis in for this movie is so interesting um, and, and to, to have it happen. I also like the the way that Bianca is portrayed compared to Adrian, where Adrian felt like a nag a lot of the time, where it's like, oh, well, I, you know, you shouldn't do this. Don't do this, Rocky. Don't do this, Rocky. And he's like, I'm going to do it, you know, anyway. Like, until we get to that one where, you know, it's like, you know, win. Like, Bianca's always like, all right, go fuck him up. Like, I, and, I, and I like that about Bianca compared to compared to, to Adrian, especially. Um, and it's like their chemistry is great. Tessa Thompson and, um, and Michael B. Jordan, they're great. Um, and I think that the thing that really impresses me about this is that a lot of times when you see someone in the movie direct it, um, they don't have a huge role in the movie. There are exceptions to that. Um, but like if you watch a TV show and a, and a cast member is directing the episode, that character tends to have a B story at best, if if not no appearance at all. Um, and, and there are exceptions, but a lot of times those characters may not speak for a good amount of the movie. They may only have one line and, and that's it. And it's like we, we can kind of just, you know, acknowledge that it's it's a rarity that it happens. And when it does happen, if it's executed well, then it does work. Um, and I think this movie does do a great job with that uh, the entire way through. Um but, uh, but yeah, I think we'll put the spoiler warning in here, um, and we'll go into spoiler territory. Okay, so from here on out, there will be spoilers. So, I love the way they do the backstory with why Adonis and Damien have this, you know, th this relationship, where it's like, you know, Damien blames Adonis for everything that goes wrong in his life, and from his perspective, you can see why that is. And then for that to happen, and for when we're introduced to these two characters back in 2002, um, he, when you have that happen and you have uh, Adonis, you know, carrying the bags for Damien, Damien, who's this big fighter, and he's, you know, a champion fighter and all of that, and for that to all go away, and then for him to sit in prison for 18 years and slowly watch Adonis get everything that he wanted, um that that's got to eat away at him. So for him to go through and to, to have everything happen the way it does over the course of the movie for him, where it's like, oh, I completely understand why Damien is acting this way. Um, I, I love the, you know, after we do the flashback, we have that 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 fight that happens with uh, where it's a rematch with uh, Ricky Conlon. I, I like I love that. Um and, and, and one of the things up and down this movie that you can feel from watching it um, is Michael B. Jordan definitely has a profound love for anime. Um, specifically, I would say Dragon Ball Z. Um, because I'm watching this and I'm like, this feels like I'm watching a Dragon Ball Z fight. And it's just so well executed in that, that it's just it, it, it just makes the whole thing a little bit more entertaining on that level. Um, like, the, the, the way that they, you know... The way they portray him is kind of like, you know, when they show the fights and it's like, you know, it, 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 you know what it also felt a little bit like the, was it Guy Ritchie who did the Sherlock Holmes movies? 
um, like the the Robert Downey Jr. ones, where it's like when we see him slowly working out the fight and it's like figuring out what moves to do to to beat Ricky Conlon. That's all great. Um, the relationship with um, with Felix is also a fun one that I like that they went into a little bit, where it's like he's now training the next generation because he's retired. Um, Adonis, and I, I really like that idea and having them do that. Um, I think that there's one complaint I have with the movie is that, and it's not even specifically this movie that kind of lays it out. It's, it, it is the issue that we're in this world that has been built out in the previous entries and, and we have this kind of, not expectation, but this kind of idea of like, okay, so here's what these characters are, here's what they do, and here's how they interact with each other, and here's Adonis' backstory. Um, but we never mention, you know, oh, here is, you know, you know, here's this pretty big part of it where it's like he was an accessory to an assault with a deadly weapon, um, which I'm not saying we have to have that in the movie prior to this. Um, but I think that like, had there been, had there been some acknowledgement that, um, like he, he had this kind of past with, you know, with this person who also wanted to be a boxer, like, it would take away some of the heavy lifting that this movie has to do to get from point A to point B, um, which is completely lay out this relationship that's never been addressed before and all of that, which, again, I don't really like faulting a movie like this for having that problem, but it is a problem that the movie does have, um, and a, and a little bit more, not clarity or, like, something like that, a little bit more like a interesting way of handling it across the, the, the three, the, the two movies prior would have made it a little bit cleaner, which even that I, I, I don't think is really necessarily something that needed to happen considering how much of a drama this movie is. It does a pretty good job of kind of, you know, doing that up until this point. Um, what else was there? Um, the, the fight, I, I talked about it a little bit in the pre spo- in the the spoiler free part, but the uh, the fight with um, what's his name the fight with uh, Felix and and da- and Damien to get the for Damien to get his uh, to get the heavyweight championship is so great and so well done. Um, it is uh, it is very well shot and like I said before, just brutal. So as he's getting fucked up and he's just getting punched and punched and punched and punched and it just beating the shit out of you feel every one of the hits and you feel the impact of what's going on around them and that really makes the you know the, those action sequences um those action sequences pop um it would it like and i think that, that does a really great job with um with, with with making those you know the action sequences feel set apart from the other rocky movies and the other creed movies i would say um what else did I want to address? Um, and the final fight. I mean, the, the last fight in the movie. Because, look, the movie is a little paint by numbers. You can kind of figure out where it's going from beginning to end, and, and there really isn't any expectation. But, like, by the time we get to that third fight at Dodger Stadium, where it's where it's uh, Adonis versus, um, versus Damien, and that fight is starting, it's like, I don't know about anyone else who's seen this movie, but I was so amped up going into that. And, like, where it's, like, I've talked about it with, like, other movies, where it's, like, Revenge of the Sith is a great example. Where it's, like, the movie's not great, but by the time you get to Mustafar, where um, Obi-Wan is getting off of Padme's ship and staring down Anakin, and the two of them are kind of circling each other, like, two predators about to murder each other, like, two lions about to fight... And, and they're preparing to fight. Yeah, the dialogue is shit. Um, but, you know, the the everything about that sequence just works so well. And it just amps you up for this fight that's coming. And then when it launches into it, you're like, here we go. And I get kind of the same thing here. And one of the things I really liked about this fight is... Um, I think it was a tracking shot. But I think there's more visual effects involved here. Where it's like... The first two rounds are kind of, you know, well shot and all of that. And I think that the fight with, what's it called? The fight between Felix and, um, the fight between Felix and Damien is shot to look like you're watching it on Showtime, which is just a fantastic decision all around. It's just such a great idea to do that because it really makes you feel like you're experiencing this, um, as an actual event. This one is meant to be a narrative fight. So when you're there, you're designed to 
feel like you are experiencing the emotions that Adonis and Damien both are. Um, and, and the whole thing where it's like, you get this, this fight, when you get to, to round three through 11, which is just done via one long fight, where it's like you see them looking at each other and looking at them, seeing, seeing each other as kids. And it's like you see, you know, uh, uh, Damien pushing, um, what's it called, pushing uh, Adonis up against, like, jail cells and just beating the fuck out of him. And then you see the same thing, but uh, Adonis pushing him against the ring and fighting in other rings that he's fought in before. And you get that punch to the to the stomach that's like, that is directly out of Dragon Ball Z. Um, and it's, it's just so, so well done. Like, that entire thing was just such a great choice to do that to montage your career to get to the, the final fight. And then when you get to the end and he just beats the, like, that, in that last round, he just beats the fuck out of Damien. It's just, it is so satisfying by the time you get to that point because you're like, you've seen what Damien has done. You've seen everything that Damien has gone through to get to this point. And while you can sympathize with why he feels the way he does, and you can look at him and be like, this guy somewhat deserves pity. Because, like, the way they portray it, too, is, like, when he pulled the gun, it's not like he pulled a gun on an innocent guy. It's they pulled a gun on a guy who was abusing them in a group home. Like, everything about it is designed to make him a sympathetic character, and they do that all so, so well. Um... It's just, I, I like, and by the time you get to it, because of everything he's done to Adonis, when you get to the end of that movie, you're like, oh, holy shit, he, he deserves this ass-kicking. And it's satisfying to see. And it's, it is just so well executed the entire way through. I love the return of the other characters. Like, I liked Pretty Ricky coming back. Um, I love how much Drago played a role in this, and I love Drago and, um, and uh, Adonis' relationship. And how Drago is helping him train to, to fight uh, Damien. And the other thing is, is this, this through line with Bianca. And Bianca has kind of the emotional arc of the movie. Um, not the, the emotional arc of the movie. But like a major kind of thread to the resolution is tied to Bianca. Where it's this idea that Adonis shut himself out. And he uses fighting as a way of expressing his emotions. Because he can't do that anymore. And now that he's retired, he doesn't have that outlet. So now that you get to the end of the movie. And it's like. You know, and she talks about movies like you can't just beat the shit out of your problems. You have to talk about it with someone, and if not me, you need to find someone to talk to it about. And then for the fight to end, and for Damien to have lost everything that he had gotten, for for Adonis to go in and talk to him, and just have this heart to heart, man to man moment where it's just like, look, you know, I was wrong to run away, and then for Damien to say, no, you weren't. It's this great moment where it's like, oh, we can move past this now. And I'm looking forward to Creed Four. Um, this movie is fantastic. If you have not seen it yet, go see it. See it on the biggest screen possible. Um, it is very much worth your time to watch. Um, and I'm like, if I have time, it's a very packed month of March, but if I have time, I would see this movie in the theater again. It is so worth seeing. Um, so like on our rating scale of one to five, uh, this is a five. Hands down, it's a five. Um, but on that note, we'll wrap up there for today. Uh, so on the schedule, we have Operation Fortune scheduled for tomorrow. Um, or if you're listening to this tomorrow morning on, on, uh, on March 2nd, later today, um, that is not the case. We will not be doing that tomorrow. We'll be doing that on Friday. Uh, Josie and I are recording an episode tomorrow evening. Um, we also have, uh, on the schedule, um, if you're listening to this, the night it goes up, uh, Mandalorian review going up tomorrow morning. Uh, we have Bad Batch review. We have Flash review. We have, I feel like there's one other show that I'm forgetting and The Last of Us coming up. Um, we also will be doing a, a discussion of uh, hands-on with Nintendo Switch Online Expansion. We'll be talking about that in the near future, too. But I think that's enough for today. Let's wrap up there for today. So until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.